Hi, I'm Liam Milan. In this video, we're going to look at Ableton Link and how we can use it for collaboration. So Ableton Link is a protocol that came around in Ableton Live 9, and it allows basically different platforms, different bits of gear to synchronize together in terms of their tempo and where the downbeat is of the ideas that you're playing. So um, basically, in order to do it in terms of having computers or it could be a, a, a phone device or anything like that to synchronize, the first thing we all need to do is set it up as synchronized on the same network. So at the moment, I'm connected on two laptops to um, the same Wi-Fi network. Now, if you uh, don't have a Wi-Fi network, but you have two computers, you can do what's called creating an ad hoc network, which basically means that you're creating a network out of, out of the blue without the need for an actual Wi-Fi connection that's independent of your computers. So if I needed to, I could go to, um, to the, the list of uh, options here and just go to create network. And then this one's got the name of my computer. I click create and then any other computers in the area within the Wi-Fi range of that laptop can connect and, and join the network coming from this computer. But in this case, I have a, a general Wi-Fi network, which I'm using too, which works perfectly fine. Now this is happening over Wi-Fi. We can do Ableton link over an actual ethernet network connection too. It just has to be a network to communicate between the computers. So um, what we're gonna do is basically run two Ableton Live sets from two laptops and have them synchronize and get the audio to run so we can hear the audio of two computers at the same time. So the process basically starts with starting on one computer and making sure that that joins our link session. So if I go to preferences for a minute, there's a few options that we have here. So if I go to the link MIDI option, we have the show link toggle. And if you look in the top left hand screen at the moment, you'll see that a button called link appears or disappears. And we want to see that because that will allow us to join a link session. The next one is a start stop sync option, which if we have other systems set up to also have that enabled, it means that if you press start or stop on one computer, all the other uh, computers in the setup will start and stop at the same time as well. So um, I'm running Live 10 on this newer laptop, but I've also got an older laptop that's running Live 9. That was actually before the start stop sync option was added to the software. So although I can turn start stop sync on on this laptop, this laptop won't hear that. So it's not something I need for this particular session, but it is useful if you want different people to have the control to just basically press stop and stop the music from playing. So um, we're both on a network. If I hit link on the first laptop and then I hit link on a second laptop, we'll see a number update, which says basically two computers are linked to each other. You'll notice that the transport displays are synchronized right now between the two. I don't know which uh, one had the first uh, tempo setting on it um, in terms of the, the tempo that we have now, but if I change the tempo setting of this computer, you'll notice on this computer, it's synchronized too. So this is the whole idea, tempo and playback are all synchronized. So next thing we need to do is get the audio of the two laptops to play together. Now this laptop is running through to what you're hearing right now, so we don't need to bother with that output, but we do need to get the output of this laptop plugged into the input of something that will play it to our speakers. So in some situations, you may wanna run the outputs of the two laptops audio outputs into a mixing console and then have that mixing console run to a set of speakers so you can hear everyone's laptops together. Another option is if your audio interface supports it and has a direct monitoring option, you can run the output of the second uh, computer in this case into the direct input on the audio interface. So you'll hear the output of the laptop that's connected to the interface via USB as normal. And then with direct monitoring, you'll also hear this additional audio output going into the interface without it having to run through the software. So the reason why I'm saying try and run the audio of this one and this one in parallel to our speaker system is because if we start trying to run the audio of this unit into the uh, mixing environment of Ableton Live and then out of the mixing environment of Ableton Live into our audio interface, timing discrepancies can creep upon us and we don't have quite a tight kind of sound setup. So for now, we're gonna set up with the most uh, sort of uh, low latency setup we can have. So first thing I need to do is grab uh, quite a kind of crude setup at the moment. We've got a 3.5 headphone output from the laptop, and then I have two RCA connectors which will connect to the input of my audio interface. Okay, so I'm gonna take my 3.5 output here, 
take my RCAs and plug them into the line input on this audio interface. And then make sure that the volume, because I'm using the headphone out, the volume's fully up on that laptop. And then the best thing to do is basically run the metronomes and make sure everything's working as expected before you actually start getting creative and, and loading in sounds. So I'm just gonna make sure all the, the sounds in my project are actually um, muted at the moment. And if I press play on this computer, we have our metronome. Now if I press play on this computer, and turn the metronome on, we're not hearing anything right now. So Audio is running to this interface, but the input or direct input monitoring switch is not on. Now, it won't necessarily be a switch on your audio interface. It could also be a, a, a dial that runs between, sometimes it's referred to as door audio or USB audio, which will be from the computer that's actually connected via USB to the interface. And you can blend between the input that's directly coming in, which would be this laptop on the left, and the output of the USB from the computer that's actually wired to that interface. So it might be the middle position is the best to get a balance of this output and this output together, but experiment with it and see, see what works best. So at the moment, I have a fairly simple setup here. I just have an input monitoring switch. So if I press play and then press play on that Ableton Live, we can hear it. And I've deliberately set the metronome on this Ableton Live uh, 10 computer to a different sound just so I can hear that there's two metronomes running at the same time. Okay, so they're both running at the same time. And if we were to do the drums between one and the other, they'd sound pretty much in time in terms of how they're, they're gonna sound at the same time. Um, next thing we need to do is basically just get a sound running in this one and then load in some sounds on this one and go through the process of, of this kind of potential collaboration. So um, unless you you know you have a, an issue with computer resources where you just don't have enough power in one computer and you want to work a song between two computers, generally this is useful collaboration. So it could be me on this laptop, and it could be a friend on this laptop creating ideas. So I'm going to just get the uh, project running that's already in here. We know we're synchronized, so we can turn the metronomes off now. Okay, so I hope you can see how that works. Now there's a few things to make sure that you're clear on here. So we have synchronized the playback between these two computers here. There's no other relationship between the project happening here and the project happening here. So you, you've already seen we have to make sure we can hear the audio from the two computers together and combine it to our playback system, which we've done using the direct uh, input monitoring. Um, but there's no way that these sounds are actually in this project and these sounds are in that project. These are separate computers. So in terms of project management, you will need to go to file and save and save this here. It makes sense to have the same name, but maybe computer one, computer two, or the name of the person who's using that computer. And then of course, you can always look through the live browser and then drag the parts of this project into this project at a later date, maybe after the jam session. One person takes it away and works on it further. But the two projects do need saving locally to the computers, and then it's up to you how you decide to share and interact with those projects after that point. So we've looked at Link in terms of getting it set up over a network, how we can get the audio running through to an audio interface so we can hear the two together in terms of uh, playing in unison in time. The last thing to mention is we're not just tied to Ableton Live and computers playing it. So we can have other software, DJ software, other door software that supports Ableton Link, they can synchronize. So if you have someone who uses a certain platform and they don't know how to use Ableton Live, but you wanna collaborate, as long as that software supports Ableton Link, you can collaborate. You can work on your own workstations 
in sync with each other and just have your own control over what's going on on each uh, workstation. Now, computers aside, I, I may have mentioned it before, it can be apps that are on phones. So it could be Android apps, it could be um, iOS apps. As long as, again, they support able to link, they just have to join a shared network and then enable the link function and they can all synchronize. The key thing you'll have to make sure you can do is take the audio output from the uh, phone in this case and run that also alongside all of these audio signals as well.